Welcome to the Bombay Bar Podcast. On today's episode, we have with us Justice Shahrukh Jimmy Kathawala. His road to judgeship is truly an inspiring one and reveals the kind of success one can achieve with hard work and determination. As a lawyer, he built an extremely successful practice before joining the bench. And as a judge, his courtroom was a place where every litigant knew their matter would receive a fair hearing. For those of you who do not know Justice Shahrukh Jimmy Kathawala, he didn't come from a family of lawyers. His parents originally came from Surat. Shahrukh, can I call you Shahrukh or would yes, you like sir. me to call you Justice no, Kathawala? No, you can call me Shahrukh. Good, <laughs> thanks. Shahrukh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your parents? They were from Surat and eventually they moved to Bombay. Can you tell us why? The parental home of my father was at Ankleshwar. He also had a house at Surat. My mother was from Surat. My father had lost his mother at the age of six. And my mother had lost her father at the age of five. They could not complete their education. They were unable to complete their education. And therefore, they later decided to come to Bombay in the hope of settling down and for a better life. My mother initially worked for about a month in the confectionery department of RTI. But she found it very difficult because they, she had to walk from Thakurwar to Yuzhis Road every day and come back walking. So after a month, she left the job. My father was doing odd jobs till he got a job with Godrej. Of course, he was there as a worker because he was not highly educated. And he started on a salary of rupees 90. Nine zero. Nine zero. And thereafter they got married. So and they weren't married when they moved no, to Bombay? they were not married. So later they got married. They got a room at Malkambag Jogeshwari in a flat where an old lady was residing. And since she was alone, she allowed them to stay with them, with the, of course with the permission of the NM Vadia Charities because that is the trust who are the owners of Malkambag. And later, when that lady passed away, and I think out of three, two of us were born, the trust considered their case very sympathetically and they allowed them to use the entire house. The rent was rupees eight, but it was not possible for them to pay that rent and therefore, they applied to the trust to give them some subsidy. A subsidy of rupees three was sanctioned. So they had to pay rupees five and three rupees was the subsidy. And where did you go to school? Uh, I went to St. Xavier's School High School at Villepale. And it was a school which was not that costly. But that also my parents were finding it difficult to pay. And we were taking help from several Parsi charities. Then I joined Wilson College uh, in the art stream. I was there for five years. And whilst you were in Wilson, you were active in student politics. Yes. Student politics, actually, I was not aware of any politics. One fine day, they said that those who want to stand for class representative elections, hmm. that is the CR elections. Huh they can give their names or fill up the nomination. And I filled it up. I was not aware that every political party has a student wing in colleges. I see. Like the Congress had NSUI, the BJP had ABVP, the Shiv Shana had BVS, Bhatia Vidyati Sena. There were communist outfits also like SFI, AISF. They were all the student wings of political parties. I was not aware and I was not interested in joining any. So, initially, I saw that some students started following me in the college. Hmm. And I was perplexed, what is happening? Why are they doing this? Later, they came to me and they 
tried to bully me by saying that no you can't stand for elections it was against my nature to succumb step down to such and succumb to all this so i refused to withdraw my nomination i contested the elections i won but the majority was not with me later i then i again contested the divisional representative elections again the same problem but i contested and i succeeded then next year when the elections were held i tried to gather support from other students hmm i encouraged other students that you should stand for elections and for students there should be no such politics involved right we have to stand win and take care of the welfare of the students right. and the institution so many from these other even those who belong to the student wings of this parties they all stood and we succeeded and i became the chairman of the students council and luckily that year was the sesqui centennial year of wilson college 150 years but we had a lot of programs as a chairman i had to i got the opportunity of addressing the gatherings the trustees had come from scotland we had uh, special functions now from wilson college you decided in wilson college that you are going to do law i had decided that i will do law right from the age of 7 Really? Yeah. What what gave you that motivation? My parents used to say that you should become a lawyer. And thereafter even I felt I was they encouraged me to participate in elocution competitions, debates and uh, I also felt that law will be the best profession for me. And in GLC also you contested the uh, student elections. Yes, in GLC also I contested the student elections because in every college there are two panels. the rival panels in my first year it was our panel which succeeded hmm and i was the office bearer and we did a lot of work in the second year the rival panel got elected but i was the only person from the other panel who was elected as a secretary and they wanted to remove you they as they were certainly secretary. not wanting me there and therefore one fine day they passed a resolution saying that they don't have any confidence in me and i should be out and uh, i went to the principal the principal said that it is very difficult for me to handle these students no one is listening to me and i don't mind supporting you even if you go to court at that time i was working as a apprentice what is not now called internship in mulla and mulla I went and told my senior that we are talking about becoming lawyers and do justice and all and what is happening in our college is very shocking and disappointing. He called up Gulam Vanwati and he said that this is he knew me also because I was working with Mulla Mulla I was going to Gulam and all these council regularly. So he said he asked him to see me. When I went he asked me what has happened and I told him so he asked his juniors who were also known to me that you file a plaint and move the city civil court and ask for relief saying that these resolutions should be set aside and these resolutions were passed at the right time when the annual day of the college was to be held ha huh. so they were not wanting me to participate in the college and they were not wanting my name to be there in any of the souvenir or any brochures as the secretary, as the secretary. so next day one of his juniors he prepared the plaint we went to the city civil court with two of his juniors and i remember it was just his athale we took a ex parte order it was a saturday restraining them from stopping preventing me, you preventing me from acting as the secretary of the students council when the order was served on them the next sunday on monday morning they i think monday was the annual day ha huh. on monday morning they came to me and they said that we are moving justice atle for setting aside this is ex parte order i was also a student they were also students so i rushed to the high court to uh, and tried to locate gulam juniors that they are moving the court so you please come they were all busy 
So I went to Justice Atle's court, I entered the box. In person? In person. And another boy who was the secretary, he also entered the box. And both of us started arguing. And he said that this is the ex parte order and it is, we have passed a resolution, which is a valid resolution. We were not heard and today is the college day. And uh, in the brochure, his name is not shown. Then how do we uh, distribute the brochure? Because there are several advertisements. The advertisers have paid several thousands of rupees. In the meantime, when the judge was actually fed up of us, P.K. Pandit came to the court. He was a well-known... Yes, yes, of course. City he was the doyen of the yeah. city. And uh, he told the judge that the principal has just called him up and asked him to appear in this matter because the college was also made a party. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> he told the court that this is the problem. This side which has passed the resolution... They are creating a havoc in the college. The principal is just fed up of them. And then there was nothing left for me to do. The judge immediately passed an order that if you have passed this resolution, you and the brochures are to be distributed to the evening, you go and get a rubber stamp made immediately, and put, put it on the brochure as a secretary, and announce in the college they function that he is the secretary. When they came out, they came with a worse order than that was passed <laughs> earlier. When you were in government law, you had already started interning in Mullah and Mullah. Yes, I with had. with Mr. Soli Kolabaola. I initially, when I was in my first year, up to afternoon or so, I was free. So you would spend time in the canteen. So one of the professors, Professor Kotak, was my well wisher. He told me that. I know that you are giving tuitions in the afternoon and evening, but why are you wasting your time in college? You better join a lawyer if you want to become an advocate and start working. So I said that I am looking out for a job with a lawyer who can pay me. He said that is difficult for a lawyer to teach you also and to pay you also because I said I need money. So he said, okay, I will try. After a few days, he came and told me that there's a very old firm where there are two very old lawyers and they are willing to pay me 300 rupees per month. I was very happy. I immediately joined them. But to my dismay, within a month, I realized that I had never visited any court except the motor accident tribunal. So I had a rethink whether I should go for money or, or I should concentrate on tuitions and go ahead with a firm where they don't give me any money, but where I get an opportunity to work in all courts and uh, learn. learn different laws. So I went to Mulla Mulla. In Mulla Mulla, when I went to one of the partners, he asked me whether you want to sign articles. I said, no, I want to be a counsel. I want to do counsel practice. He said, don't say this here, because if you tell every anyone mm. this, they will say that you are coming just to learn mm. and then leave after that. Mm. So he said, I'm sending you to one Mr. Kolabawala, but don't say that you want, don't want to sign articles as a solicitor. So I went to Kolabawala. Kolabawala asked me, what do you want to do? I just couldn't lie. I said, I want to do counsel practice. He said, you don't want to do solicitors, you don't want to sign articles. I said, no, I don't want to do it. He said, that is very good. Sky is the limit in council practice. So you must do council practice, but you will not get a single naya paisa here. So I told him that I know that we are not going to get anything here, but allow me to leave at least by 6 o'clock every day so that I can go and give tuitions. He allowed, and after 6, I would go give tuitions at Paiduni, Chirabazar, Sikkanagar, all those areas. Reach home at Jogeshwari at 11 in the night, get up in the morning, come back for the 7 o'clock lecture to Government Law College. That is how I was introduced to hard work. And did he give you any kind of tips on drafting? On drafting, he would always say that drafting is the foundation of litigation. So before you start drafting, you should read all the facts, go through all the facts, 
go through the law which is applicable to the matter and only then draft. What I later realized in drafting was that over and above this, you should also have a foresight as to what the other side will answer to your pleadings and take care of that in your pleadings and try to weaken their defense. This is what one will learn with experience. But this is what I would like to, and I would always tell my interns, I used to always, I, in my 14 years of career as a judge, I must have had 300 interns. Wow. Uh, so, I used to always tell them that please follow this. You must know what will be the answer of the other side to what you are. And this you can do only if you have studied your matter very carefully and meticulously. Otherwise, you cannot. Mm. And then, uh, after you finished your uh, law, you started practice straight I away? I started practice with Rafiq Dada. Right. One of the best... Uh, Undoubtedly, Council. undoubtedly, I remember, in fact, seeing uh, you there. Yes. And uh, who was your colleague there? Colleague was, uh, within a week, Suresh Gupte joined uh, Mr. Dada. So, you a started week after, with Suresh Gupte. You had Suresh me. Gupte as your colleague in, yes. in the bench. Yes. And now you're sharing a chamber also with Justice yeah, Suresh. Even earlier, yeah, as soon as he joined Rafiq Dada, we were both strugglers. And as money-wise also, we were sailing in the same boat. So, we know the problems of each other. So, the first thing that we did was when our practice started picking up and we had to buy a cause list. During those days, we had to pay some 800 rupees or yes, something. Yes, yes. So, we would pay 400 each and buy one cause list. We had one pune whose salary was 600 rupees. We would share 300 rupees. We had one account with Mrs. Gracious on the third floor canteen. <laughs> so, if he wants to eat anything, he would eat. If I want something, and in the by the end of the month, You're we cheering. will not check who has had what and pay 50-50. That is why when we purchased the first chamber also, we were together. It is only after he became a judge. First I became a judge, then he became a judge. That Then he, he sold his uh, portion of the chamber to me. Okay. And later in, by 2013 or so, I think he became a judge. I was appointed in 2008. And uh, he retired before me, about nine months before me. So he came to me and he said that, now if we practice, we will need a bigger chamber. So would you like to look out for a bigger chamber together? I said, I have no problems. I never had any problems with him. So... I was a sitting judge. He was, he had retired and he had started looking out for chambers. Then he told me that there is a good chamber at Free Press House, and that is how we took the chamber together. Though our work is completely independent, we share the premises. So, what was your first brief? Who did you appear before? The first brief was before Justice Sujata Manohar. Oh. The first case, it was a writ petition where a very old Parsi lady, they were the owners of Premier Aerated Waters, years back, which the business had come to a complete, complete standstill. Down. But the phone was in the name of that Premier. So, and she received a bill of some few thousand rupees. That phone was shifted to her residence from that workplace since years. And she received a bill of few thousand rupees. So, <clears throat> She was shocked. She was in her perhaps seven, late 70s or 80s. And she came to Kolabawala and we drafted the writ petition and I appeared before Justice Manohar. And I think Justice Manohar realized that it was my first appearance. <laughs> and she granted ad interim relief. She said that you pay 700 rupees. It was, we had to explain to the judges that the name is Premier Edited Waters. But this is now not a commercial, it is not used for commercial purpose because this phone is transferred to the residence of this old lady. And at her age, she can never make so many calls. So she gave ad interim relief, asked us to deposit 700 rupees. And 
the old lady was very happy and she said okay now again you should appear for the next stage also which was the admission stage that came up before justice bharucha now justice bharucha was of the view that excess billing cases in excess billing cases you shouldn't file a writ petition it should be a suit, suit. because there are disputed questions of fact but here when i narrated the facts to justice bharucha he realized that the facts are very disturbing for a old lady and such a senior citizen mm. he admitted the writ petition and that same order continued the telephone continued and later i don't know what happened the lady mustn't be must be still there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find the bar was it encouraging supportive you didn't have a godfather in no, the no you had no uh, godfather but if you have worked with a firm and with a good senior and if your senior if you impress your senior that yes you are conscientious you will you are hard working then they do try to nurture you that was the advantage that i had though we are always aware that uh, initially work is not going to come so mm. easily right and always those who have someone in the profession they have an advantage right. yeah, and they will get work but uh, on the whole the people were supportive though there are exceptions there is jealousy in the profession mm. there is backbiting mm. all this goes on but from the word go i had decided that you shouldn't care about all this you should uh, have a tough skin of a rhinoceros and proceed did you have a doubt at any time i was not having having a doubt but there was insecurity at some stages if i would not get a brief for 4 5 days at a stretch then myself and suresh gupte would sit on the third floor sipping coffee <laughs> and discussing what we will do if we don't get work mm. i would say that okay i will go back to tuitions he said he'll take a job somewhere you were very close to your parents uh, and they encouraged you to become a lawyer but did they also encourage you to become a judge my mother was very very keen that i should become a judge because during those days they were in the awe of that term justice as okay. a lawyer you must have been earning much more than much, you would have much much more as a judge much much more but the day i felt that i can retire from tomorrow hmm and i have enough to take care of myself of course my needs were not too many i decided that okay i'll take up judgeship but you were asked twice yes but so by the time uh, uh, i agreed apart from the insistence of my mother i was financially well placed so i felt now it's okay because when we became judges i don't know what was our salary we were getting hardly 1 lakh and odd hmm which you don't in half an hour right right it must but, have been a big uh, yes of course so but fir bhi i will not consider it as a sacrifice because i feel that we go with our eyes wide open hmm and accept what hmm. is offered to us thereafter we cannot crip i don't like judges who take up judgeship and then, and then crip step down by saying that oh we cannot take care of our household expenses or you also cannot encourage corruption on that ground mm. you know what can we do the salary is so meager mm. no sorry these excuses are not available once you take up judgeship right and the first time you sat on the bench you did income tax matters with justice radhakrishnan with justice radhakrishnan yes. how how did you uh, did you do income tax work never no therefore so my prayer was at the time of swearing in that i should not be made to sit with a senior judge who is doing income tax <laughs> so they made But you they sit. went unanswered <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, initially it was quite difficult mm. but later as you put in work and all you realize that okay it's not bad i learned many things i learned that the income which you earn as a in smuggling activity is business income under the income tax act Hmm. which I was never aware of and it was very shocking i find i found it very difficult to accept initially but this is how you learn always you were always known for a person to give justice hmm. 
and uh, how did this philosophy of giving justice trying to settle matters how did it evolve in your mind that was there during the practicing days also because it was uh, any any good lawyer hmm will first ask his client whether there is He any possibility settle. to settle the matter no one wants to drag a matter and even number of times when our clients were in the right and the other side was exploiting them we would still try to settle the matter knowing our system knowing the expense and therefore when i became a judge so it was very simple for me to convince people there were of course people who would not listen to the judge also hmm. but many of them they'll try to understand because they know that we are speaking through our experience it's not just off the cuff that we are talking right so settlement and i always felt even as a lawyer that a judge should be a relief granting judge hmm people come to you with a lot of hopes expectations from you so if you can give them some relief always give them don't show them the door by all these technical yes arguments and right. excuses no don't do that don't try to be over technical try to help them be practical so you've also summoned a lot of people to your court like yash birla that was very necessary why can you elaborate especially when you want to do instant justice hmm yash billa it was a company matter hmm he had resigned as a director of his own company hmm and he had appointed his cook and the housekeeper as the director as directors of the company now what is the sense if i ask parties to file their affidavits and come i'd call those cooks and housekeeping the poor chap they knew nothing so then the only alternative is to call yash billa to the court when he came then i told him that you will have to take the responsibility of and give me an undertaking that you will file the accounts of the company with the official liquidator the affairs and whatever mm-hmm. is required mm-hmm. to be filed mm-hmm. so he had to give an undertaking though he was represented by our very senior advocates everyone is aghast when they see that a cook or a housekeeper is appointed as a director of the yeah, company yeah. the director himself he resigns mm. so that for any criminal liability those poor chaps will go inside complete fraud ah, so such a person will have no sympathy right and he will also not want to make this more public right right so right. he had to immediately agree another thing why we need people in court i'll give you another example a petitioner came to the court saying that i have a field where i have grown soya bean crop hmm he showed me the photograph the soya bean crop was full fledged the field was full of that crop well grown and he showed me another photograph where the authorities with a jcb were removing and destroying the entire crop so i said what is this so they said that the authorities they want the part of the field during mahashivratri which was immediately next week to for that festivities oh i said this is uh, this is just unbelievable it's unpardonable how completely high handed and yeah. arbitrary so i called the collector of course now it has become simple to call them because they come through video conferencing hmm so their time is not wasted hmm only when the matter is called out they put their monitor on and their, mm, mm. and their addresses so he and the ceo of that the corporation or whatever that authority was they came before me first they tried to give excuses saying that we are doing this because we had called a meeting and where the family members of this farmer agreed i said if you have a called a meeting i want to see the minutes of the meeting mm i want to see the minutes of the meeting and i want to see the signatures of the person who were present hmm. you must have taken some attendance sheet so they said no we don't have anything and when they saw that this is not working they told me that there is a 712 extract of this farm 
on which there is an that the satbara utara on which there is an endorsement that during ma shivratri for 15 days they will take possession of the farm i said which, under which provision of law on a satbara utara you put this endorsement how correct again they had no answer then i took an undertaking from them that they will whatever festivities they want it will be on that public road you can't use an inch of that farm what happens to the soya crop that's been destroyed yeah, that, that again poor chap has to replant for damages mm. you were always very strong against this yeah. state overreach yeah. Yeah. and you have awarded a lot of costs i'm told from your staff we found out that about 34 crores mm. you have given in uh, to charity yes and there was this uh, matter relating to nippon steel where you insisted that they even though the matter was settled that they give 5 crores to the tata memorial yes wh- wh- why even after they settled did you impose uh, no they were uh, manufacturing pipes in the name of nippon right not only that they were giving certificates of nippon to the buyers okay the guarantee or the warranty certificate which is very serious so at the most they come and say okay, okay sir now i will not do you can pass a decree against me that's not going to help because mm. in intellectual property matters mm. i have repeatedly observed that people they immediately come and say okay pass a decree next time nahi karega the moment you do you pass a decree they go out and they start in some other name so this is a known so and this was a very very serious offense so i asked them that what is the profit that you have made so i asked for the balance sheet and i saw that they have made very good profits otherwise 5 crores is a extraordinary order mm. we never give this type of costs so when i saw that they have made very good profits i said you will have to pay 5 crores within 7 days otherwise you go behind bars they got so scared that in the next two days they paid five crores because the offense was such mm. if the police would have taken cognizance of this they would have been behind bars for yeah, a very very long yes. time but you've always modeled your life on charity you received charity when you were small mm. and you have been giving back to charity which are your which was your first charitable organization that you were involved with I was not involved with any organization as such. I don't believe in giving charity to all these very very big organizations. I would like to give it to these hospitals where you know how they are functioning. Right. So the first scholarships which I introduced in the memory of my younger sister was for the students through Zoroastrian Students Teachers Organization. It is called Zosta. Mm-hmm. which i started about 20 years back when you were a lawyer when i was a lawyer all this charity mostly started when i was a lawyer because a very substantial part of my income was going to charity and till date as far as this scholarships are concerned i have uh, contributed or donated whatever you say rupees 2 crores and 13 lakhs so it is for the students now this was for the community members whenever people approach me for scholarships even if they are non parsis because i believe that as far as education is concerned you can see the caste or the community education should be for everyone so whenever i am approached i give them freely but after learning some hard lessons i try to give it straight to the college mm, mm. or the school so when you were um, a judge and you were looking at a counsel what what kind of arguments did you what is the kind of way in which you wanted counsel to argue before you i wanted counsel to be prepared and i wanted counsel to be honest honest to the court honest to themselves honest to the court not in the sense that he has to tell me everything that he is not required to tell me that his client is has done this or that or he is absolutely wrong 
but sometimes it is better to say that here there is a mistake hmm. because i would always tell the lawyers also <clears throat> even if the lawyer if he makes a genuine mistake we can find a way out for them and help them in getting out of it mm hmm but if you just try to spin around and just make stories then it is difficult mm. and once i would find that out i would be very harsh all right so it's always better i'm not saying at least as far as law is concerned be honest don't try to mislead yeah never mislead the court because i've always told lawyers and my interns that judges talk and judges discuss if you have been dishonest in my court there is always a discussion and it may go to 10 judges hmm. saying that please be careful of this lawyer right and don't depend on him and trust is very very important in court ne we absolutely are surviving on trust ne absolutely we trust the lawyers we don't say for everything that you show me where it is written his word is enough right but once the court feels that no this man is not trustworthy then no one will trust him and that is especially junior lawyers we tell try to tell them this hmm. because sometimes in your enthusiasm or out of fear also you may make false statements but that in the long run will prove very costly so we have to counsel them we have to tell them what the consequences would be hmm. and they understand you were also uh, hearing matters till late in the night mm. how did you uh, manage to convince your staff as well as counsel to do this and why did you See, follow this approach the counsel community is such that if a counsel wants a relief he is for the plaintiff and if he needs a relief he will wait till whatever time you want to but if he is on the other side hmm and he has to defend he will say he'll start cribbling cribbing and say oh what is this i have to wait this is not the way this is what happens so counsel complaints i was not taking it very seriously i was taking them because sometimes what would happen is a senior counsel will say that no i don't want to wait i'll go away get it placed tomorrow the junior counsel argues before me he tells me that this is the, i would ask him what is the matter he'll say this is it i pass the order in his favor then the, the senior counsel has lost his brief and fees so some sort of resentment is always there mm. of course if a counsel has some genuine grievance you would always i would always look into it but most of the time it was this problem and what about your staff how did you convince the them the staff had no problems at all it everything depends on how you take care of them the staff my staff was like my family if you take care of them they will never crib but you took care of them out of your own pocket yes always so as i said even before i became a judge hmm. uh, my substantial part of my income was in charity right so why not charity for those who work for you right right charity begins at home so now to wind up you had a career as a lawyer you had a career as a judge what would you tell your 25 year old self today 25 year old self i don't know but i would have i would like to tell myself that i should have taken up the judgeship earlier so you would recommend that lawyers do consider yes and the very job satisfying satisfaction that you get there mm money is always important right you cannot say that money is not important right. you need money and money is always important but money is not everything you the job satisfaction that you get here as a judge especially when you do all these matters is immense and that satisfaction the lakhs and the crores that you earn as a counsel will never give you that satisfaction one more case i'll like to tell you yes during diwali i think it was in 21 about 19 people had filed a petition hmm. saying that the 
developer has taken our place for redevelopment of our flats from the last seven years. Occupation certificate he has obtained in February, hmm. but he is not giving us our flats. Why are they not? Why are you not getting your flats? No, now he says that you pay pay for the chajias. Now he says that you give us an undertaking that for ten years you will not sell your ownership flat. I said, what is this? Once again, I summoned the developer. The next day it was Diwali New Year, and I said that. He has to come with the keys of this. There were 130 tenants. 19 people had collected some money and they had come to court. I said, tomorrow you have to be, he has to be in court with the keys. When the developer's son came, I asked him, on what basis are you asking for the Chajiaka money? Uh, money? And why are you saying that you can't sell it for uh, 10 years? So I said that there is a permanent alternate accommodation agreement with them which you are supposed to provide. Is it provided in that agreement that they have to pay for the chajiyas? Is it provided that they cannot sell the flat for 10 years to come? He said, no, it was subsequently decided. When there is a written contract, there can't be an oral contract. I said, nothing doing. You give them the keys right now. There were people in my court who were 88 years old, 80 years old, 79 years old. You will see their photograph in the Times of India of 5th of November 21. There were tears in their eyes. They were distributing chocolates and kachoris in the court. And they said that, okay, now before we die, we, at least we, have, we will be in our flats now. This is how you can do instant justice. This is the job satisfaction you get. Right. right. Not in the company matters and the shareholders agreement and that agreement where crores of rupees are involved. Mm. It is all rupee and and pais. These are the people who need justice. Correct. Mm. But you never felt that when you give a judgment that mm. I'll be overruled. Never Did do you that. have that? No one should think about that. I feel that you have to do your job and forget it. Because if you have made a mistake, uh, it will be corrected by the appeal court. Right. Supreme Court makes mistake. Otherwise, why will there be five judges and seven judges benches? Why there will be reviews? Mm. Huh? That's the last court. Correct. They make mistakes. So, if you make mistakes, what is the problem? It will be corrected. They are meant for that. So never worry about what will happen ahead. You have to only answer your conscience and the Lord above. Nothing else. That's the philosophy you have lived yeah. by. And that's the, that is what you are telling mm -hmm. lawyers and judges today. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. That Thank you very much. Really wonderful. Justice Kathawala's life is a true example of what one can achieve with hard work, self-belief and determination. You just watched an episode of the Bombay Bar Association podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos. We also have an audio podcast which dives a bit deeper and is available on all podcast apps.